gave pray, but when I looked up to heaven, storm Christ came to say, I'm living in Canaan now. Too near to me, my heart to win. I'm living in Canaan now. I'm living on Canaan's side. Egypt behind. Cross over Jordan wide. Madness to find. My soul is satisfied. No longer blind. I'm living with Jesus up in Canaan. higher ground will not be long till Christ the Savior your soul is found you'll sing this song I'm living in Canaan now living on Canaan's side Egypt behind cross over Jordan wide gladness to find my soul is satisfied no longer blind I'm living with Jesus up Canaan, Canaan right now. I'm living on Canaan's side. Egypt behind. Cross over Jordan wide. Gladness to find. My soul is satisfied. My soul is satisfied. My soul is satisfied. I'm living with Jesus up in Canaan right Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. What a blessing it is to be here this morning. Thank the Lord for his faithfulness. We just want to welcome all who have come. We welcome all our visitors and welcome those who have come to share with us today. And we're just so glad to be here. And so just thankful. Amen. God is faithful and uh, thankful for the lack of one hour of sleep, but it's good to see everyone this morning. That gives me my first announcement. If you did not receive a call last night reminding you to set your clocks forward, please stop by the Welcome Center and make sure that I have a phone number for you because a call went out to remind everyone. The other announcement is Ladies Bible Study tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. So I invite all the ladies to come out and enjoy a time of fellowship as we study God's Word. But so glad to be here. Join with me as we open the service with some prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do praise you today. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, and we thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy today. We thank you, Lord, to be a child of the Most High King. And, Lord, we just come to worship you and to praise you. The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And, Lord, we've come to praise you and worship you and, Lord, to hear from you. So we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way in the service. And, Lord, we pray for souls to be saved. We ask your blessing upon the live stream. And, Lord, let everything that is said and done be for one purpose, and that is to glorify Jesus. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who is worthy of all of our praise. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's remain standing this morning as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let's sing this old song, I'm Redeemed. And by the way, I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed from the darkness of the night that so thickly enveloped my soul. In my heart there have gleamed rays of wonderful light where the waves of thy glory now roll. I'm I'm 
I'm redeemed by thy blood from the power of the grave and the victory I've had over death. Oh, that wonderful flood, how I felt its power to save when I plunged in its fathomless death. Oh, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed from all sin, and I'm walking in the light, and thy spirit illumines my way. I've no fear now within, or the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day. Oh, I'm redeemed. the just which shines brighter and brighter each day they shall sing and shall talk with the bright angelic host where all sorrow and sighs flee away I'm redeemed I'm redeemed praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood of the I like that last verse. Let's do that again. I'm redeemed. One shall walk in the pathway of the dust, which shines brighter and brighter each day. They shall sing and shall talk with the bright angelic host, where all sorrow and sighs flee away. Oh, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Can you praise, praise the Lord this morning? Lord, I'm, I'm redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am saved from all sin and I'm walking in the light. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Not to repine That somebody is Jesus And I know he's mine Oh, somebody loves me Answers my prayers I love somebody I know he cares Somebody tells me Not to repine that somebody is Jesus and I know he's mine. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. Praise Praise God. I pray you are praising God this morning. Amen. I tell you. A lot of preachers say it, but it's true. Heaven's not going to be this quiet. That's right. And we're God's children. We are to be, if I have to put it in a right, in a, in a word, I'd have to say we should be rehearsing how it's going to be because, you know, when we get to heaven, I tell you what, you're not going to be quiet then. Amen. Amen. 
It's all right to shout. It's all right to say amen, amen. And I tell you, when you think about how God has moved amongst us, it makes you want to shout. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Got much to pray about. Continue to remember your faithfulness and your giving and your tithes and offerings. You are so good and so faithful in your giving, and God will richly bless you in doing so. I want to remember all the needs of the names that are on the back of your bulletins. So many, so many names. We read these lists, and we include every one of those names that are on the back of the bulletin also in this, and even those that we don't know but that God knows. We see here where Jave Rodriguez, five years old, continue to remember this need. Jim and Barb Prophet continue to remember them. Remember Linda Richards. Continue to remember Bob Jackson. Continue to pray for Linda Hopkins. Let's remember Diane Gilbert. We have all of our unsaved loved ones that we need to continue to pray for. God's going to save them. It's not his will that any should perish. Amen. Our country. Our nation. And in that, we need to be praying for our military men and women. That God protect them. They're standing by. I know they are. They they love their country. They serve their country. And we need to honor them and all that might be sitting here. There are veterans. It's a great sacrifice when you love your country. Amen. Ukraine, that nation, I commend them on their strength and their faithfulness. I hear them talk of God. And I keep telling the wife, I would love to see God's hand move. Yes. You know, see that big giant fall over there. Amen. Yeah. I, uh, I've seen and heard this morning of a few others. I'll not mention their name, but brothers and sisters, we have those amongst us. Maybe watching my live stream too, but right here that are hurting. Yeah. They're hurting in these bodies. No doubt there are some that are lost, but there are those that are hurting in these bodies, and we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters. I was reminded last night at a singing that we went to, the wife and I, it sort of humbled me a little bit. We know these things, but it's good that the Lord says that we be reminded. I want to continually stay humble, to never judge other than judge myself in the mirror through the Word and the Spirit. If all of us would stop pointing and judging others and get ourselves right. The pastor keeps telling us about revival, revival. When we get right, God will send that revival. Amen. And they sang a song last night. They sang it here before. And I told Brother uh, Jim when they sung it, I said, you know, that'll preach. But it's time, church, that we lay our Isaacs down. Whatever you have standing in your way of coming to these altars and receiving what you need, lay it down. In saying that, Brother McCarty, would you come up here to lead us in prayer as we all stand? Those that will come to the altars. But I want to encourage you, it's not the position of your body, but rather the position of your heart. Know in your heart that what you've asked of the Lord Jesus, you shall, you shall receive. One of my heroes are here in the service this morning, Brother Isaac. He's only 102. If you've got an excuse, he'll show you how to get to church. Yeah. I missed him last Sunday. I didn't get to shake hands with him. He, he runs too fast. So we, we love every one of you this morning. We uh, try our best to remember. I had a cousin die this week, and he he's one of the smarter part of our family. He was a professor in Scotland, in uh, Ireland, and down in Lexington. But no matter what you got, at the end, it don't amount to anything. All that education, and I'm, I'm proud of him, but it don't amount to anything. I want to remember his mother. She lost another son. He was a lawyer. They all were successful in life, but I'm wondering about where their souls are. So this morning... If you've got a child and they're still living, if you've got a neighbor, you got a friend, a family member, we see all these people rise and a lot of politics going on. 
We see them with power and hunger, just like Putin. He's got power and he's chi. They're all wanting to take over everything, but life comes to an end. And you'll stand for whatever you've done in this life. So when we pray this morning, make sure you include yourself. Because I am. I want to make it above everything I've ever done in life. I want to make it home. Preaching 45 years, I think, or 44. And I tell you what, I still get nervous when I get in the pulpit. You know why? I honor and fear him with a godly fear. And I want to do the right things. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, humble as we know how. But we're so glad that this morning we can cry out for those that are suffering. This morning, the Ukraine, that people in body bags roll them in ditches. Families are never leaving their home, leaving their retirement, leaving all their family members, dads leaving the children and wife and going to fight a battle while they see them for the last time. God, we this morning, we might see our family for the last time. God, we're looking to, this morning to rescue our perishing today. God, we convict our families like they've never been convicted before. God, we pray that they can't eat or sleep uh, till they get a hold of the throne of God. God, we're looking for you this morning to pour out your spirit upon your people this morning. We're needy people here in this crowd. Uh, we're uh, live stream this morning. There's people that can't make it to church. <clears throat> we're living in perilous times. Uh, if we can't see it all around us, uh, people loving their, lo- loving their self, uh, they're not concerned about their neighbor. They're not concerned about anybody around them. Uh, but God, we're living in a time uh, still that voice uh, is crying out. Uh, that same spirit uh, that... Uh, John cried out in the wilderness, Behold the Lamb of God. I'm glad He's here this morning. I'm glad this morning. I'm not just walking in the pulpit this morning, but I'm walking in the holies of holies this morning where the priests used to stand. But I came through the veil. That's the blood of Jesus. I come here with a petition that God, You would reach down in our hearts this morning Break all the pride. uh, Break all every thought and mind uh, that captures us that's not of God. Have your hand over this service today. Bless every sweet person that came through the door. If they're not, they can be when the service ends. We're asking you to anoint our singers. We're asking you to anoint our pastor. Lord, the Bible said... You would make your ministers a flame of fire. I'm looking for them to burn up in the spirit right here in the pulpit. I'm looking for the word of God. It's a consuming fire. It'll burn the chaff right off of us. This morning, if we'll hear the word of God, God will answer this morning every prayer that we ask. It may not be in our way, but I I love this scripture where they said, our prayers are bottled up in heaven. Even after I'm gone, the prayers of my children, the prayers that I prayed for my neighbors and my family members, it'll still be heard. Our prayers are not in vain. We've got a God. His ears turn toward the righteous this morning. His eyes behold the good and evil. He's watching over us this morning. And when Jesus died that death, and when the Father rose him, That same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives in this old boy this morning. I live in a kingdom of God. People are looking for the kingdom. And Jesus was talking to the disciples. And the disciples said, where is the kingdom? He said, it's within you. Well, we didn't see it come. He said it come without observation. We're looking, a lot of the church people are looking for a literal kingdom. We're going to have a glorified body. This is a spiritual kingdom. Once I got in God's kingdom, I seen something different. I seen the marvelous light. In Jesus we pray this morning. Amen. I need his Oh
Good morning. The mission of Community Pregnancy Center, their mission is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to uphold the sanctity of human life and to promote sexual purity for all and care for those hurt by abortion. Additionally, they have a care closet which provides diapers, formula, and small furniture items to those in need. In the 35 years, they have met with more than 50,000 women and ministered to their children as well. What a dynamic ministry it is. We have the privilege of having Lou Kimball, who attends here. She is contacted, and she is our contact with um, Community Pregnancy Center, and she serves there in ministry. Lou, would you stand? We appreciate you. Thank you. She has graciously arranged this that we could have Candace Keller here with us this morning and her husband. If you all would stand, today is Candace's birthday. <clears throat> Candace is the director of Community Pregnancy Center here in Middletown, and what a ministry it is. And she's going to come in the next few moments and share about this ministry. Let's welcome her. And uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am today on my birthday. Uh, it's interesting. I was born in Post Town and on Corley Road. I don't know if anybody knows where that is, but I'm, this is the closest I've ever spoken to the place I was born. So I'm glad to be in Post Town this morning. Thank you for letting me come. And uh, I do want to express my thanks to Lou Kimball for she is the queen of baby clothes at the Pregnancy Center. She's very organized with our care closet. And um, just so you know, we see about 1,800 client visits a year at our agency of women who are mostly poor and mostly who know nothing about the Lord. And so um, Lou has a very important role at the Pregnancy Center. So at the Pregnancy Center, we're down on Roosevelt Boulevard, and we're in a building that was owned by Courtney Duff. And I know a lot of people here know Courtney. Courtney was a mentor of mine. And I never dreamed that we would ever be in his office. And um, his building was bought by a guy named Tim Ball. And I know a lot of you know him. And the Ball family have been also been a blessing to us. So I thank the Lord for the, first, for the Church of God people. <laughs> the Anderson, Indiana Church of God people have been so good to us. And, uh, and I, too, want to... Thank you. The music was amazing this morning. I love the music here. It's great. Every girl who comes into the pregnancy center uh, gets to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ when she comes in. And just so you know, it's set up very much like a doctor's office. She comes in to the window and fills out a form. And we meet with her and talk to her about what it is that she needs. And so we have every single thing that baby needs until baby goes to school, uh, clothing, baby formula, diapers, car seats, cribs, and all the things that she needs uh, that she doesn't need to worry about. And so we uh, very much are honored to get to meet the needs of these women who come in. I can't begin to tell you how the culture has changed in the 15 years that I've been there uh, right now. Um, I believe we are living in the most exciting time in all of history. It's the most exciting time in all of history to be alive. Uh, the Lord has raised us up right now as the church 
to bring this message of salvation in this last day. And uh, Jesus came, as we know, to give life and to give it more abundantly. The devil hates us. He hates all of us. He hates all of mankind. And it is, it is his job to destroy us from the very beginning on up. Uh, there's a story that I tell uh, because it happened during COVID. We never closed during COVID. I kind of was hesitant the first few days about being open. But we went ahead and started doing curbside service, kind of like Taco Bell. And we would go out and deliver diapers and baby clothes through the windows of cars. I kind of felt like a drug dealer. But we put on our mask, and we um, didn't do any intake paperwork, but we wanted to make sure that women had what they needed. And if you'll recall, in the very beginning, there was a shortage of diapers and formula. We never ran short of anything. And a lot of people in town, because I'm from Middletown, know me. Uh, people began to have things delivered to my house. And uh, I woke up one morning, and there were six car seats on the front porch of my house. And sometimes we'd have diapers and formula delivered to our house, and then I just live one mile from the center. So we never ran out of anything. But as you know, it is Satan's uh, goal to destroy the innocent unborn. And two years ago, my husband and I were in Israel. We went to a place um, where they had sacrificed babies thousands of years ago. Nothing is new under the sun, you see. And um, it was a stone, sort of a caved, a carved out place with a, uh, a sort of crib made out of stone that was there. And my husband and I were uh, uh, away from it, and, but it was, it was kind of some uh, steps going up to it. And I had just had both my knees replaced, but I thought, I'm, gonna, I'm going up there and look at that. And when I walked up there, I thought, uh, first of all, there was a spirit that hovers around things like that demonic really and I looked around and thought oh there's nothing new under the sun we have always taken the lives of the innocent uh, because we we are born in rebellion to God and so now nothing has changed so in this country right now every 19 seconds there's another baby aborted 4,000 a day uh, 1.7 million a year and by age 45 one half of all American women have had an abortion and so this is something that we have learned to live with for 49 years. We have taken the lives of the innocent unborn, uh, 65 million babies in 49 years. Next year is the 50th year of Roe. I believe in Jesus' name that Roe will be overturned next year. I'm just declaring that. And, uh, you know, Esther, uh, from the time that I... <clears throat> won the primary until the uh, general election. I knew what I was walking into. And I read the book of Esther over 30 times. And I noticed that she was raised up during a time when the people of God were coming under attack. And she was very reluctant in the beginning to be involved. And she wanted to just go on and be queen and be uh, unnoticed. But you know what? God raised her up just like he's raising up the church right now to speak out against violence and uh, assault on the innocent. And so remember, she comes to terms with her, her goal in, in life that God did put her there for such a time as this. And God has put the church right here right now, this church, these people right now for such a time as this. My dad passed away two years ago, and he said to me one time, uh, that God's timing is inevitable always. So I feel like I'm not as brave as my parents, and I feel like my, I'm not as brave of my grand, as my grandparents were, but God has put us here right now for this time, for this purpose. And a million years ago right now, he knew that you would be here, this generation, to face down what we're facing. And we are totally living in the last days. He is even at the door, even at the door. And so we are going to continue to fight just like Esther did when her cousin came to her and said, who knows that God did not put you here for such a time as this. And she, finally, he says to her, if you don't do this, God will put someone here to do this. So it might as well be you. And then remember, she finally says, if I die, I die. 
And so I thank God for the opportunity that we get <clears throat> to meet the needs of these women who come in. And we do it through and we act as an arm of ministry of churches like this that are pro-life. You obviously don't have a pregnancy center in this church, but you, we operate as an extension of you by sharing the gospel with women who come in. And I'll just, uh, I, we brought a bookmark here for everybody and some baby feet pin, like at the one I'm wearing today. We put them in the back at the Welcome Center to remind you to pray for us. I'll just close by telling you a story. When we were open during COVID, uh, we, uh, one day I was at the center, I think it was a Tuesday, we closed uh, for the day and I had one staff person there with me and we heard a knock on the door. We'd already locked the doors and we had a knock on the door and uh, I went down and we don't turn anybody away, you know. And a girl was at the door with her little boy who was two and uh, two years old and she said, I, uh, I need to talk to somebody. So we brought her upstairs and she had blood on her face coming down the side of her face onto her clothing. And she said, I um, am in an abusive relationship. My boyfriend came to where I work. Uh, she was a hairdresser and she said he threw a brick through the window, broke the window and came after me. My boss fired me and I got in the car and fled away, picked up my son at my friend's house and I came here because I'm afraid to go home. And um, so I had $80 in my purse and I gave it to my staff person. I sent her to Walmart to get her uh, underclothes and a nightgown and a toothbrush and stuff like that. And while we were alone, I, you know, a, a good part of what you do as a counselor and even as a pastor is you gotta learn how to listen to people and listen to their heart. And she said, uh, I don't know why I keep going back to the same life that I live every weekend. And I keep doing the same thing all the time and it's not working. And she said, now I have this two-year-old little boy, and he was out in the play area, and of course we had everything we needed for him. And she said, now I don't want him to see me live like this anymore. See, she, you know, God chases all of us. They just don't know that. And she said to me, uh, I feel like God is chasing me. And I said, well, God chases everybody. And she said, well, now I think I'm ready to get caught. And, you know, we prayed, and she knew absolutely nothing about the Lord. All she knew was that that was a cuss word. She, that's what she thought of the word Jesus Christ. And I can't begin to tell you what an honor and a privilege it is to pray with somebody who knows nothing about Jesus, who knows doesn't know why he even came, or, or what that has to do with them, or what their future looks like. But as we talk to them about healthy behavior and risky decision making and, and changing, you know, you can, your life can turn a 180 degrees in a moment's time. It's so easy to come to know the Lord. And even at a pregnancy center where we lead women to the Lord all the time and then we give them, it's such an honor to say, you, you, we have everything you need till baby goes to school. And you know who did this for you? The church. Yep. The church did this for you. And, you know, she left, and she's continued to come back. Most women leave about seven times before they stay gone. But in the meantime, this child that she's had has turned her heart toward the Lord. And I'm so grateful, first of all, that she never aborted him and that she had him. And I'm grateful that I unlocked the door and let her in. And most of all, I'm grateful that the church provided the baby clothes and the formula and the diapers and the stroller and the car seat and the crib that she needed to have all these things in her house. So I praise God today for the church. I praise God for Post Town Church of God, that you're pro-life and that you stand with us. And I ask that you pray for us as we continue on. I don't quit until I win. Amen. And I'm not quitting until we win. Thank you. Church, you've listened, I hope, and we have ushers in the back, and they're going to be coming, and we're going to be taking up a love offering, and uh, I don't know, but I believe God touched my heart, because we're talking about little babies, we're talking about those that can't do for themselves. I want you to take and just uh, take a moment and reflect on yourself. 
There's probably not one of us. If there is, I apologize ahead of time, but there's probably not one of us here today that don't have a shelter to go to, food to eat, clothes to wear, have family we can turn to, but we have some that don't have anybody. So I pray that you think about that as our ushers come and we take up this love offering. That's what it is, love. It's the love of God's people giving to help others. You know, the Lord said, you know, to us that as we do to these little ones, we have done to him. So you think about that as you give and just give as God lays on your heart. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Brother Wilson, can you, can you bless the offering? this song and uh, I told the told the group I wanted to sing this song I wanted to learn one more song this is probably the last Sunday that I'll be with you probably I'll be here some Sunday nights and maybe some Wednesday night but if the Lord wills this will probably be my last Sunday morning and I wanted to learn this song because I heard this on the radio a few weeks ago and we worked on it and worked on it worked on it. I don't know how it's going to sound because it sure didn't sound good the other day but I think we've got it down to where it won't be too bad. But the message in this song just says, we may go down, but we're going to go down standing up. And there's going to be a time in our lives when we feel hopeless, you know, about our condition, physical condition. But there'll never be a time in my spiritual man that I'll feel hopeless because I know Jesus as my Savior. And so this song talks about some saints of old. It starts off about John the Baptist and how he went down. But when he went down, when he finally had to go down, you remember what he said? Now, John the Baptist baptized Jesus. But the, at, the, at the very end, and this is how Satan works, you remember what he said? He said, he sent two guys to ask Jesus, are you really the one or should we look for another? Now, you think Satan can't do that, but he can. So you've got to stay strong while you can. Every opportunity you have to come to church, every opportunity you get to hear the word, you need to be here, you need to listen, and you need to be with God's people. Because there's coming a time that Satan will overtake you if you're not awful careful. He is a strong adversary, but greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. Amen. So I want you to listen to this. I hope we do this song right. We've actually done a couple of new songs. Um, not, the other one's not new, but we're going to sing it. And uh, this one just says, we'll go down standing up.
Jesus gave his life for the cause of Jesus Christ, because he stood up for the right. With heaven just one breath away, he did not mind to die at all. You see, when Tony and wanted to sing, and he thought it was a new song. This is an old song, um, and I, we really haven't done this one either. But Tony's going to lead this song, and uh, I don't see him here this morning. No, I don't either, but we'll sing it for him again if they come. It just says, "What a beautiful day!" And boy, wouldn't this be a great day for the Lord to come back? I know we want to tarry a long time because we we keep praying that our loved ones will be saved, and I know that's the right thing to do. But I believe when He does come back. We're going to see him as he really is. And I don't think we have a clue of what that is. I know the Bible says that I has not seen ear nor heard, neither entered in my heart what lays in store for us. But the Bible goes on to say that that spirit that dwells within us reminds us and gives us a glimpse of what that's going to be. But it's going to be a beautiful day when the Lord comes back. You pray for us today.
disappointments and my trials here below fade away when I remember his last word. He said that he'd return. This is a song that I came here with, Pastor. I got to have 15 minutes before I leave one of these days to tell what what God did in my life here. And uh, when I first came here, I was I was crushed. Pastor met me for lunch, and uh, he he coaxed me through that, prayed me through it, and helped me to get back to where I needed to be. People sure can't hurt you sometimes, people that you don't expect to hurt you. <laughs> but through it all, Amen. Hallelujah. Pa- Pastor has helped me. I'm, I, I can't even tell you what you've done for me, Pastor. But this song was the first song that I, when I got back up to try to serve the Lord a little better, this is the song that we sang. First song, I think it's one of the first ones. We're not the first one we learned, but one of the first ones. And it's got a message to it, and I hope I can leave you with this message because I don't care what comes your way. Just make up in your mind. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable work in the Lord. Make your mind up not to quit, no matter what people do to you, no matter what they say to you, no matter what they tell you, say something about you, know this, that God loves you more than he loves anything. And he wants you to make it. And if you're not saved today, he wants you to get saved. Amen. Because he made you to be a people for him. And this song just says, I can't quit. I hope, hope it'll, it'll bless you the way it's blessed me for the last three and a half, four years. Candace referenced this when she spoke too, so hope it blesses you, Candace. Well, Jeremiah said, Lord, you've deceived me, and Lord, you've done me wrong. Oh, I've been out here preaching faithfully. It seems left me all alone so I said I'll not speak or mention your name at all but your word is like a fire 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the Bible declares unto us in Proverbs, it says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. In other words, the real fruit of a man or a woman who walks with God is giving life to others. And you know, we spoke about that. We want to see people live for the glory of God, especially to have the life of Christ. And you know, as Christian believers, as we follow the Lord, we are to share the life of Christ with others who need Him. No matter where you go, there are people who need the Lord. Folks, we're living in a world where so many, so many need Christ. Many need the gospel. Many are perishing without hope. And many are living under sin and Satan's power. I love where the Apostle Paul, he said, For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. In other words, our lives are to be an aroma to others. Amen. The aroma of Christ. That His light would shine through us and that we would simply be an honest and authentic representation we need to be the real deal. The Apostle Paul goes on to says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Now folks, there are false prophets. And they prostitute the word of God for their gain. They handle the word of God deceitfully. There are preachers that will give you what you want to hear. 
and comfort people in their sin. It is important that we have an authentic personal life and testimony, not just with our lips, but with the way we live. We've got to back up what we say we believe. In Mark, the fifth chapter, Jesus delivered a man from a great torment, and he gave the man a great testimony. And Christ comes to the man, and he delivers him from Satan's control. And he saved the man from a life of darkness. And I can tell you what Jesus did for this man, he could do for anybody. If you have your Bible, turn to Mark, the fifth chapter. Let's stand together as we begin verse 1. The fifth chapter of Mark. The Bible says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, man, can you just picture that? He ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I? To do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh into the mountains a great herd of sweet swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. A few more verses here. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not. But saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Praise the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Our message I want to share with you in the next few moments is entitled, Jesus is the Bondage Breaker. Father, we thank you for your word and may it find good soil and bring forth much fruit. We ask, dear God, for the divine unction to preach your word. And Father, we pray for liberty in this service, that a man or woman could easily get the help that they need. And so, Father, pour upon us from heaven this morning. Feed your flock. Encourage the hearts of your people. Strengthen your church. And help us to be bold in this day where many... Many, Father, need the hope. That hope's only found in Christ. Thank you now, we pray in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Amen. You know, right away we're told that Jesus met a man 
And it says there in verse 2, the man with an unclean spirit. The man had an unclean spirit. You know, I believe there are some today who are struggling with an unclean spirit. That word unclean simply means impure. It means immoral. It means foul. It's unclean. The Bible lets us know there were demonic spirits here involved. And the man was in great need to meet the one with all power and all authority. The omnipotent deliverer, the demon defeater, the spirit cleanser, the chain breaker. How many know Jesus is still the way maker? He's the sea walker. He's the storm talker. He can say, peace be still, and the the wind and wave obey him. You see, Satan's work in many lives today and in many places to, to bring destruction. He wants to destroy people's life. He wants to bring division and ultimately damnation. And you know, if the devil can, can't get people to not think about hell, he will at least make people just laugh about it. Where no one will take hell seriously. The truth is, Satan blinds people from the truth of the gospel. The apostle Paul He charged the church in Corinth, he said, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. How does the devil blind men and women? First of all, by unbelief. He blinds a man or a woman by unbelief. They simply do not believe the word of God. He also blinds people to believe that there's no real hell. And he wants to blind people so much so to keep folk from getting saved. Now you know the Bible tells us the church is the ecclesia. Meaning the called out. Which simply means that the people of God have come out of this wicked world in response to the call of the Holy Ghost. But as long as the devil can keep people from believing the Bible, he, he, he blinds them through their own, own belief where a man or a woman cannot see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, the devil has blinded even preachers. So much so that preachers don't preach on hell anymore. Listen, first of all, Jesus confronted the evil. He confronted the evil. Now, Mark chapter 5 is just on the heels at the end of chapter 4 where Jesus has led the disciples through the storm. He told them that we're going to the other side. So Christ knew where he and the disciples were headed after the storm. Jesus knew they were going to land in the country of the Gadarenes. And Jesus knew exactly what they were going to be facing. The Bible records, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, verse 1, and to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. You know, first of all, I believe this speaks of preparedness. We need to be spiritually prepared to confront evil. As a church, we need to be prepared to confront evil. As Christians, we need to be prepared to face evil. We are not just to ignore it. We are to confront the evil of our day. The question is, are we prepared as we ought to be? Are we ready for the battle? To be prepared means that we watch and we pray and we put on the full armor of God. To be prepared to confront evil means that we've got to take the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. Jesus confronted the evil and we too must confront the evil. This also speaks of the power of God to confront evil. The church's power lies in her consecration to God. Listen, we cannot defeat the devil by telling him how good of things we have and how nice, how big buildings we have and new things. Listen, the only thing that can defeat Satan is the power of God. In Jesus' name. 
church is paralyzed in her ability to know and to speak God's Word. And the church's power lies in the power of the Holy Ghost working through us. We will never win over evil by trying to be like this world. The last two decades, the church has tried everything. From removing alders to rebranding the name. The church has tried black lights and billboards and big statues and bar music and bounce houses. Yet for the most part, the church has been powerless to cast out demons. How about we get back the Holy Ghost power, church? Where the unction of God flows. Where the power of Christ is sufficient to raise the dead and to deliver the demon possessed. And where the power of God puts a rebuke against the schemes of the devil. Now I know there are places where Satan has strongholds. There are cities where Satan holds under his sway. There are homes and families where Satan is working to try to destroy. The good news is Jesus Christ is still the bondage breaker. Jesus had come to the territory where the demoniac lived. We're not told what the man's name is. I believe you could say the devil had stolen his identity. It says in verse 2, And when he was come out of the ship, when Jesus had come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. First we see the man dwelled among the tombs where there was no life. This I do know, those who are spiritually dead are usually uncomfortable where there's life. Where the Spirit is alive, where the resurrected gather, you won't find dead people hanging around. But a dead man is at home with dead men. Next we see, the Bible says, in verse 3, He had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. It speaks of the power of the devil over this man's life. Listen, the devil, he has power, but he has not the power that equal to God. There are many today who are powerless in themselves to get free from the enslavement of Satan. They think they're free to live any way they want. They run blindly in sin. They they drink from the devil's trough. They indulge in unclean and immoral behavior. They lust and desire and they crave after something to give them their next pleasure. All along the devil has them hoodwinked and blindfolded and bound. They need the bondage breaker. They need the one who set this man free to set them free. The Bible says because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. You see, the great need today is only is that only the light of God can expose the schemes of Satan. I believe that. I believe that if a church believes the truth and wants the truth, the truth will set men and women free. I believe the Word of God has the power to cut deep into a man or a woman's heart and in their life and bring good things out of their life and cut away evil things. Yet many want to avoid the light and remain in their sin. How many know God's Word is the sword of the Spirit? Bible says, for the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God's Word is like a surgical scalpel. It It can intricately cut out hidden cancers of the soul. God's Word is like a machete as well. It can cut down every thorn bush and briar and hindrance to our walk. But God's Word is also a great sword to combat every demon spirit and demonic attack. It is the great shield that by faith we're kept by the power of God. Listen, God has given us all we need to stand and confront the evil of our day. Next we see where the man was self-destructing. 
He was definitely in self-destruction mode. He was wild. No man could tame him. He was, he was, I mean, untamable. And the Bible says in verse 5, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. You know, the devil wants to take a man or a woman's life. And I thank God Jesus wants to restore it. The goal of evil is to dominate, dominate and control. Do we not see that today? The goal of evil is ultimately to destroy, to desecrate anything that's good and holy. The goal of evil is to draw the life until nothing is left. But Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. How many could be saved if they would just allow Christ to rescue them? How many could be delivered and set free from the path of self-destruction if they would only turn to Christ and call upon Jesus' name and seek God and live? Now the Bible says here in Mark 5 or 6, And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped. In other words, even Satan must acknowledge the superiority of Christ. Christ has all power, and Christ deserves all worship. I'm concerned about a lot of things as a pastor, and I know you are too. And one of the things that I'm concerned about is our young people. And how Satan wants to get a hold of their lives and what's being taught to our young people today. And these clubs that they've been starting, satanic clubs. My wife watched part of it and she was, she was, I mean, absolutely beside herself of the out and out full throttle of evil that they're trying to push down the throats and into the minds of our young people. Listen, our young people need to know that God is in heaven. That Christ came from heaven. He came and lived among us a sinless life. He went to Calvary's cross to die for the sin of the world. He was buried, but thank God on the third day, He arose from that grave. Our young people need to know that Jesus Christ is alive and He's coming back one of these days. And they need to know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, our children need the truth. The point is, whatever we hold in place of worship is the power that will control us and have authority over us. Here we have this demoniac. He was wild, untamed, out of control, unclothed, yelling, running through the country. Sounds like some of these wild parties they have today, isn't it? Somewhere along the line, this man opened himself up to the work of the devil. And he had no sense to realize the devil just doesn't take an inch. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile. But the man had enough sense to run and fall down at the feet of Jesus. I thank God for what Jesus can do for a man or a woman. I want you to notice, first of all, Jesus does not acknowledge the man's worship while he's in this condition. But first, Jesus commands the demons to expose themselves. He asked in verse 9, Jesus said, what is thy name? And he answered saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Some say, well, this man just had a sickness and disease. I've never heard a disease that can speak. Listen, a Roman legion in that day consisted of 6,000 men. Nearby are 2,000 swine. Will you do the math? It's simple. Jesus cast 6,000 demons out of one man into 2,000 pigs. Each pig had three demons. And Jesus commands in verse 8, where he said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. 
In other words, the presence of the devil was labeled by Christ as an unclean spirit. And I'm glad that Jesus has all power over all unclean and foul spirits that are demonic. And the Bible records, and forth with Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. The herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 that were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and the country. They went out to see what it was that was done. You know, when people hear that God's on the move, they'll come. And the Bible says they came to Jesus. And they see him that was possessed with the devil that had the legion sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. The great deliverance of the man was because Jesus is the bondage breaker. We see the man now, he's clothed and he's calm. He's in his right mind. He's sitting before Christ. He's wanting to learn more about Christ. You know, I can tell when a man or a woman truly gets a transformation and God does a work in their heart. Why? Because they will want to follow Christ. Those in that country, the Gadarenes, should have been thrilled. I mean, they should have been stirred. They should have been, I mean, they should have been primed and ready. Man, we're going to, we're going to celebrate what the Lord has done. But the Bible says they began to pray Jesus to depart out of their coast. I can't believe it. Instead of the people being glad for the salvation of this man, they were just simply upset that they lost their pigs. They'd rather have their bacon than Jesus. Amen. Boy, I could really go down that road. <laughs> My church dinners and church breakfasts and turkey dinners. and Man, we could get the masses to come for the bacon. How many want to come just because of Jesus? <laughs> the man whom Jesus broke the bondage of Satan. Saving the man from the work of Satan. I can identify with. Because the great bondage breaker that broke this man's bondage that was over him. Is the great bondage breaker that broke the bondage that was over my life. And God gave this man a great testimony. Jesus said, the man wanted to go on the road with the disciples. And Jesus said, no. He said, in verse 19, he said, go home to thy friends. Tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. In other words, go, let your family see the difference that's in you. Let everyone that knows you see that you're a changed man. Let everybody you know, let your children see. You come back. You go back to them. You go back. God has restored you and given you life. I'm telling you, that's what Jesus can do. Who of us can tell what the Lord has done? Who of us needs the Lord to break Satan's power and control? either over our lives or the lives of a loved one. Who of us see the work of the devil? He's destroying lives, isn't he? Who of us would be willing to call upon Jesus, the bondage breaker? Friend, I want to tell you, I believe this world needs to see the power of God again. And they need to be reintroduced to the bondage breaker. I'm going to invite you to come to an altar of prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray for our world. Let's pray for peace to come into the world, but most of all, that men and women would come to Christ. Let's pray the Holy Spirit to move upon the church, to raise up men and women, and to give them a testimony and that lives will be drawn to Christ as we stand together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, dear God, for the power of Christ to set a man free, to save, and to sanctify, 
and to set us on the right path. And Lord, this morning there are many. We pray, O oh God, let them hear your voice speaking. Come unto me, O oh, ye that weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus this morning. Please, come to Jesus. Turn your life over to him. Come on. I'm going to ask you to just get out of your seat. Come on down here. Find a place to pray and say, Lord, I've come to worship you. Friend, if the Lord has saved you, oh, may he give you boldness. May he baptize you with a holy boldness to be a witness and to tell others what the Lord has done. Come on. If Satan is working in your home, if Satan is working in the lives of your loved ones, by all means, come to this morning. Call upon the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Jesus, thou art the living bread, the water of life, the restorer of the broken. You are the liberator of those that are living in sin. You are the lifter of our head, the lover of our soul, the light of the world, the Lamb of God, the Lord of glory. God, I pray this morning, may deliverance come to those that are bound. We pray a rebuke against the work of Satan. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind you and we command you off of our children. We command your stronghold to be broken. We plead the blood of Christ over each one of our children this morning. We plead the blood of Christ over our loved ones, our families, over this congregation, over our homes, over the ministries. We pray for the unity of the Spirit and the power of God that the gospel will go forth. Save someone even now, we pray in Jesus' name. Come on, as we sing, come on, you've got a need, come on.
and have peace and sweet rest as you yield in your body and soul. Who can tell all the love He will send from above and how happy our hearts
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, all us to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Praise the Lord once again. God has spread the table. And it was up to you whether or not you pulled your chair up this morning. That's right. I have feasted, and I'll be feasting when I leave here, and I can't wait to get back tonight because God will set another table, amen, as our pastor and his wife goes out. Amen. Please let them know that you love them and that you're praying for them. We appreciate them, amen, and, and be praying for the ministry that we heard about here this morning. Amen. A wonderful thing that gets done for these young women and uh, helping them. Uh, you know, the world a lot of time will turn their back on you. We all know that as children of God, but, you know, Jesus never will. And he has a few good men and women that will do things that he would have them to do. So let's keep them in our prayers. Come back tonight. Be excited. Bring someone with you. I want to ask Brother Jack if he will come and dismiss us in a word of prayer. All the disciples meet down in front. Okay. There's a, there's a scripture before we close. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible comes out of the 8th chapter of Romans. The pastor referred to it the other night. And I want to leave you with this. It says, Who shall separate me from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature can separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Hang on to that. Hang on to that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done today. We thank you for the spirit of God that we have felt. We thank you for the convicting power that fell on the souls that were here. Those that did not yield today, I pray that you would show mercy and dig around that tree one more time. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that they'd have another opportunity to be saved. But if not, they've been, they've, they've heard the word of God preached. They'll be responsible one day when they stand before you for that word. And God, we know without a shadow of a doubt that your will is that none of us would perish, but that we would all come to repentance. Your promises are true, dear Heavenly Father. And you're not slack concerning your promises. Some men count slackness, but you're long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. But God, we have a choice. We have a choice. Everybody has a choice. We have free will, and because of that, dear Heavenly Father, you allow us to do what we want to do. But, Lord, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve you. 
And I'm so thankful that I made that choice. Will you make that choice that you might be able to spend eternity in a place called heaven? Or will you deny it and spend eternity in a place called hell where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth? It's your choice. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. As far as me and my house, we're going to serve you. And we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.